Monday Madness, Short Squeeze Rumors, DFE doubles down. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all had a great weekend. If he's still in, I'm still in. But on a serious note, it's been a lot of misinformation going around, about a 99% short ratio. I'd like to address that. This is Fintel's website. I'm going to go ahead and pin the link in the comments down below because I'm a computer scientist and I like to verify my data guys. So you can go ahead and verify this for yourself by going to this website. And now you can see that the short volume ratio as of 219, 17.7%. It was never 99. I have no idea where that came from. Uh, going back the day before that, it was slightly lower for that 1922. Now, this is a statistic that I've been watching for some time on this channel. I'd like to show you a clip from a video that I released on February 9th. 31 yesterday, and as of today, we're sitting at 22.21% short volume ratio. So the short volume ratio for the day has actually decreased. Be careful listening to Moon Boys recommending that you watch the one minute and the five minute time frames charts. Does this chart make sense to you? If it does, congratulations. Thanks for watching. For everybody else, that's because this is my real five minute chart. This is what a real trader's five minute chart would look like. Okay. I recommend sticking to the 15 minute chart and here's why. See how much cleaner this looks, guys? We have our nice symmetric wedge pattern. Now, I do like how the candles are closing green currently. Zooming in, it reminds me an awful lot of the last time we saw a candle close like that back here on the rounding bottom. And that played out to a nice 10% opening. So I do anticipate a bullish opening pre-market be ready for that. If I draw a trend line all the way back from this area and extend it, and then I'm going to copy it to make a parallel channel. It's a very clear ascending channel that we're inside of. And I'm waiting for the price to bounce around this area until we see a break. That break could be above or below. There's no confirmation yet. Be careful. Getting rid of those now. There's a lot of tension building between our upper and bottom support lines. And I can go ahead and condense the price action even further here by making a tighter wedge within our wedge, like so. Notice how close we are to the critical end of this wedge, guys. I'm anticipating a breakout very, very soon in either direction, and it could turn into a much bigger move in the future. Now, I'm keeping an eye on this box, and I'm going to call it my buy box, because I do believe that a lot of holders are buying in this box and accumulating more positions. Every time the prices dip down below into this area, 
it's been quickly bought back up. Right. Lastly, on the RSI, some people like to trade the RSI. I only use it as confluence with my other indicators. So I don't trade using it directly. But if I draw a trend line from this high point all the way down to where we are today, we have quite a few touch points there. So that looks like a valid trend line. However, no confirmation on the breakout yet. You can see the RSI is beginning to point upwards. Could easily roll back over. We don't know yet. Now I'd like to do something special for you guys. I don't personally hold GME, but I promised I would take a look at GME technical analysis due to many requests. So I'm going to freestyle a chart for the very first time and show you my process when I begin to look at a brand new asset. This is from one of my previous videos. We have AMC on the left and GME on the right. Um, I've drawn one blue trend line here, and that's the only time I've even really pulled this chart up, guys. Uh, so this is going to be brand new. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm going to go ahead and make it full screen. Uh, one second, sorry about that, guys. Trading view technicalities, there we are. Alright, so turning the VPVR on, you can tell it's pretty low at about $18 um, when I'm, what I'm currently looking at on the chart here. However, it is variable. Um, it is dynamic. It does change which level depending on the time frame that I'm looking at. So if I zoom in a little bit, there we go. You can see that from this time, range, time frame from about December 15th, mid-December to where we are today, that price action combined, the VPVR point of control is at $41.56. All right, so that is an extremely important price line for this week, especially today, because currently the candle is below it. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the after markets, what the after hours closed, um, but on the, the intraday chart here, we have an indecision candle. It, Potentially could go either way still. I would like to see these daily candles closing above $42. Even honestly, I, I probably wouldn't feel extremely bullish, <laughs> if at all bullish, until around $45. So once it hits $45, that'll be a good sign. Remember DFE did double down. He picked up some more shares recently. Um, so even he believes it's an attractive price level from here. That's not enough for me though. I'm going to turn the VPVR off now. We still have that price tag. Um, so I will put a line of support there. And since this long-term support line isn't holding anymore um, because we had a breakdown from that already from since when I first drew it. I'm going to adjust that now. I think it might actually look even nicer if I do. 
So if I do it about there, let's ignore the very bottom of the wick. And then starting down at this support, That looks like a reasonable trend line at the moment. Reasonable support line coming from way back in December. It could become lower than that. All right, we have another one down below that, like so. If worse was to come to worst, then potentially a little bit of price action between these two heading upwards creating higher lows that could also break down <laughs> um i'm going because the top support line is still holding still closing candles around there nicely i'm just going to remove this bottom one it's not relevant yet. I'd like to take a look at a couple of my favorite indicators now, the MACD and the RSI. The MACD, mm, I, um, a daily time frame is a little much for me personally. I prefer a, a four hour or a two hour for swing trades. So I'm going to go into the four hour, take a look at it. And we are painting, beginning to paint bullish momentum, continuing to paint bullish momentum. Even not only is this green, but it started to fade and could have easily turned red. But we are seeing <clears throat> increasing green action. And again, this is on the four hour, um, which is interesting because on AMC, we were watching the same indicator and AMC is only painting green on the two hour, the one hour and the two hour. We haven't seen bullish momentum on the MACD on the four hour for AMC yet. On GameStop, we are seeing that on the four hour, which is a more significant time frame. That means that the next time frame to paint green could be the daily here. It'll just take some time. That would be multiple days, potentially a week or two into the future. And we might be seeing some green momentum on there. I like the look of that. Going to the RSI now, it looks like we may Again, this is the daily. I'm going to go into a two hour, see what it looks like. Yeah, so if, if I draw a trend line, it does appear that we may be able to recognize some sort of pattern on the RSI. So I'm actually going to start from where we are today and go backwards. And I would say something like that looks ideal. Let's look at all these touch points we have. Many, many touches along this line. <laughs> Can't even draw them all. Uh, there we are. Now zooming in. Because some people do trade the RSI patterns is began to extend above the trend line but we don't have confirmation on that yet could easily roll back over it'll just take some more time to confirm that and see if we begin building more support higher it doesn't look the worst though it is oversold technically <laughs> And in my opinion, I like the green candle close that we saw here on the two hour 
I wonder what it looks like on the four hour. Looks just as nice. It's way above the last red candle. It's sitting three and a half percent, roughly above the last red candle close. It's a little early to be drawing a trend line like this because I would like to see what the price action does later today to make sure this is a confirmation, but potentially some more upside in the short term. That could align with AMC looking bullish for the pre-market hours. I would not be surprised to see this opening green. If it were to do that, hmm, we may see as high as $62, guys, off that opening move early in the day. And that could be a, a 40 to 50% move to the green side, move to the upside, okay? Do be ready for that. Wow, that is such a huge breakout. <laughs> From the point of control upwards, a measured move would yield over a thousand percent. Hmm. I do apologize for all of you who bought in at the highs. All I can recommend to you is to be patient, stay calm. If you have some more capital, it may be worth considering. <laughs> Taken after DFB's lead and potentially adding to your position to lower your cost basis. Now, from the bottom before we broke out, we are currently sitting at the same area that the real breakout occurred. I'd like to put a, let's call it another buy box. Why not? Let's put a buy box right here. Because I do believe that many people are accumulating GameStop as well in these areas. Now, if you had missed the breakout, $20 was a pretty good price to get in in retrospect. It didn't... <laughs> I was looking at GameStop pre-breakout, and to be real, I found it pretty expensive at $20. <laughs> um, then the hedge funds got wrecked. <laughs> Alright, so you guys keep on track. <clears throat> so that's our buy box. A lot of people miss this breakout move. And where we're currently sitting, it's a it's over a hundred percent up currently. I'd like to get you an accurate number here, so I'm gonna go from the exact breakout point to where we are today. That's eighty seven percent increase in the price today, pre breakout. So one way to look at that is if you missed your chance to get in here and you're willing to pay an 80% premium, it's not the worst time to get in right now. It's not the best time, right? It's not the best time, but it's not the worst time either. And I'd like to keep this short and sweet, so I'm just going to finish it with a Fibonacci for you guys. 
and then check back in tomorrow for more AMC and GME updates. So taking a Fibonacci from the high point to the very low point before the breakout. <laughs> and it's way too significant of a breakout move uh, for the Fibonacci to actually provide any kind of relevant information. Um, perhaps there's a different way to look at this. Now with AMC, I ended up lowering the Fibonacci to fit the candles better. I'm curious if I can do that as well here. Okay, it's not perfect. Nothing is. But you can see the candles closing in this area. We have this candle sitting nicely between the 0.618 and the 0.786. And then another candle sitting nicely here and here. So I would actually be more comfortable with the Fibonacci around this area. And look at that. That actually lines up quite nicely with our target down here because originally I was, I was looking at the target up in this area, guys. At this candle close, around $90 for a short-term target. But to be conservative, we're going to stick to this lower candle, this lower wick, around $60. Cool. That looks like a pretty good start for now. This is an extremely complicated chart. It looks very different than other assets. So I'm going to keep working on this throughout the week alongside AMC. And remember, this channel is always free, never monetized. So if you enjoyed this video, all you have to do is subscribe and tune in next time. Thanks guys. Happy trading. Have a great day.